We are seeing a fight unfolding here in After Hours for AMC Stock. AMC Stock actually had a fantastic day today. The stock up 1.24%. This is in stark contrast to a 1.5% drop we were reporting on in the beginning of the day today. Now, AMC's low of the day was a lot worse than where you ended up closing. So we need to get into exactly what happened today towards the end of the day with AMC Stock and everything you need to know as an investor, as a trader in this trade. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. We're also going to talk about, uh, on a broad market basis, what are the next big upcoming catalysts that you need to know that could shake up the markets. I think that's a, a, a light way for saying crash the markets. So let's get into it. So first things first, let's talk about AMC. So you actually hit the low today of $3.86 and you bounced all the way to $4.13 at the highest point of the day today, came down a little bit and then actually ended up uh, almost $4.12 per share heading into the close. I believe you closed right at about $4.09 uh, per share and currently you're at $4.03 per share. Why there's this battle going on right now? is if you look at the option chain, you have a massive amount of puts at the $4 price. You have 204,000 puts at the $4 strike. That is a very insane amount of puts. That's what you see on a normal stock's entire expiration date. In AMC's case, it's only at the $4 strike. So, you're, you're seeing this battle between um, mark makers, hedge funds, institutions, uh, big money players for the most part. Because some people want this to close above $4. Some people want this to close under $4. I think the vast majority of institutions probably want AMC to close under $4 per share. You're currently at $4.02 per share. That's why you've seen at one point almost a 3% drop. In after hours, the lowest point at about three dollars ninety seven cents per share. So if you close above four dollars per share, that is very good. Heading into next week, where things get a lot more uh, volatile, could be pretty crazy. Now we do have an analyst price target decrease from Jason Bazinet from Citigroup. Which this really doesn't make any sense if we want to be 100% honest. The price target went from $1.65 to $1.55. He maintains his sell rating on AMC. This came out today. Why this doesn't make any sense is, logically speaking, AMC can raise capital. So they're in a better situation now. But this price target is basically assigning a $15 share price after the reverse split compared to where the stock will be at if it stays at this price heading into August 24th, which would be a share price of about $40 per share. So he's still expecting a lot of downside. Now, I'm in the camp of, I don't think AMC is going to raise nearly as much capital instantly as a lot of people think and as the stock was being priced for. I think right now, that's what you've seen recently. Over the last couple of days, investors have really thought about this logically and they're coming to the conclusion that we're probably not going to see as much dilution as maybe they previously thought, especially as the stock dropped 35.5%. Things don't look all that gloomy. Now, $4 per share is a major level, but also this level that I have right here at $4.10 per share also, or at $4.09 uh, per share, exactly where we close in regular trading, is also very important. I've had this line marked here for a while now, and this basically connects um, tops of other points um, within 2023 for AMC stock. So if AMC can somehow, by the end of after hours trading today, get above $4.09 per share, that's going to be very, very good news. Now... August 24th is next week. So you're going to have the reverse split. 
And if anyone is curious or wondering what, what this is going to do, basically you're going to wake up and your share count is going to be lower and the price of AMC is going to be higher. It's not going to change any value in your position. You're not going to make money. You're not going to lose money initially off of this. Now, reverse splits normally do have a negative effect on, on stocks a lot of the time. I wouldn't say it's a guarantee, but a lot of the time it does. Now, I think specifically with AMC, the main thing is dilution. That's what people are scared of. So that would be the thing that would really hurt the stock. And it's uncertain. Are we going to get a little dilution? Are we going to get a lot of dilution? Are we going to get no dilution? What's going to happen? There's no exact clarity on any of that, on any of those questions. We just don't know. So that is a little bit of a problem for the stock. My personal opinion is after the reverse split, there's obviously no reason to then be short in AMC. Like, no reason at all. So, you probably see some funds opt to cover on their positions. Now, what this will also do is make, obviously, AMC share price higher. So, that could drive more retail investors into the stock. As retail investors, a lot of them that are not apes or in this trade already with AMC have kind of forgot about the whole meme stock trade and what's been going on. A lot of people don't keep up to date with AMC as, as far as individual investors and the broader markets. I think this could pull more money into AMC stock because of this action. Kind of the same way as if a company says they're about to go bankrupt, like WeWork is probably the most, uh, you know, relative example of this. Stock goes gangbusters after it says it's possibly going bankrupt. Bed Bath & Beyond, stock went bankrupt upon announcing it's or the stock rallied upon announcing its bankruptcy. Uh, Redbox, um, that's that's another pretty good one. Tupperware, that's a great one. Said, yo guys, we have a chance of going bankrupt. Psh, stock went from 50 cents to what, what, what was it, like $10? Yeah, so any major actions can just drive attention to a stock, and that attention in turn can turn to more people buying the stock. And that can be bullish. Now, if we take a look at some of the data here on the day, the option activity is quite interesting. So you've seen 112 orders totaling $46.05 million with a positive order value of 17%. 17% does not sound great, and it's not great in the grand scope of 100%, but it's better than what we've seen yesterday, 1% positive order value, or what we've seen with the last week of 4% positive order value. These numbers look a lot better, at least in my personal opinion. So I don't know if this means something or if this holds any kind of significant weight, but it was a lot more bullish than what it was yesterday. And what is it like six times more bullish than what we've seen over the past week or so. So a little bit more on the bullish side. Now, if we take a look at all of the data that you need to know, AMC stock is still on the threshold securities list. The FTDs are a major problem. If we go ahead and pull this up, um, pretty easy to see. And we actually have to type that into Google. I don't know why I don't have Google just listed right here, but. Uh, so let's go ahead and. <laughs> So today is August 18th. Uh, it looks like you got about 11 million FTDs. So we had 11 million FTDs that came due today. Starting off next week, you're going to have around 10 million FTDs that start the week. Then you're going to rally to 12 million FTDs. And then you're going to stay in the 11 to 12 million FTD range for the rest of next week. And then even the following week. You're going to start the week at 11 and a half million FTDs and it does come down from there. But what you're actually seeing with the FTD numbers is the FTDs are actually going higher ever since the reverse split was approved from the courts. FTDs are a massive problem and this is going to lead to likely upside uh, for AMC buying pressure as we've seen in times in the past whenever there is spikes to FTDs tends to be a pretty positive for AMC stock and a pretty good time to be 
long in AMC. That's 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 pretty straightforward. So you have that going on, as well as take a look at the Stocko Tracker data. Also, let's go ahead and give this a second to pull up. Next week's going to be a relatively high week for option activity as well. You're going to have 106,000 calls that are currently in the money, 243,000 calls out the money, 121,000 puts in the money, and 476,000 puts that are currently out of the money. So a lot of potential dry powder that could uh, have a role to play with AMC and, and how we do ultimately move. Now, the big story for really next week is going to be some of the catalyst that we must talk about. Now, AMC stock is still on the threshold securities list. You have a short score of 92, about $600 million currently in short positions in AMC. Estimated short interest off your flow at 28.34%. Free flow out and loan at 41%. Shares out and loan at 211 million. Days to cover at 7.35%. 313.25% trailing three month cost to cost to borrow fees and 84.6% utilization. So numbers look very good for AMC as, as far as a potential short squeeze, like the data is there to support it, whether or not, or, or when we do is, is a, a, a different story. You are so cute. So uh, that that's, you know, just keep that in mind. The data looks really good to support a short squeeze. But next week, we're going to have some very big catalysts. So what we have seen recently is AMC stock has actually done well on days where the markets do poorly. The markets and bonds have been doing poorly. And I've talked about this in, in a couple videos now. When bonds and stocks do poorly, but heavily shorted stocks rise on any given day that puts a lot of pressure on those hedge funds institutions that are long in the markets short in amc because you're losing on your longs and you're losing on your amc short position in theory what a lot of hedge funds want is if they're short on amc and the markets are down call it up one percent on the nasdaq they don't want to see amc up five percent they're losing on both sides in theory they would want to see amc down you know five six, seven, ten percent to make it kind of a hedge. Well, that has not been happening. So the longer this discorrelation happens between the markets and AMC, the worse off hedge funds and institutions are going to be. And next week could be a very, very big week because to next week on August 23rd, you're going to have NVIDIA earnings. Now, NVIDIA earnings are very important. Normally, NVIDIA earnings were not as important, but now they are because NVIDIA really was the stock that paved the way higher for the broader markets. NVIDIA reported earnings back in May of 2023, May 25th of 2023. And after that, well, stocks went on an epic rampage. That was basically around here. You were fighting to break above 420 support, 420 resistance on the S&P 500. And what happened? It was off to the races after Nvidia earnings. This was because of Nvidia earnings. That's what this whole thing was. This AI hopium, uh, people expecting great things out of AI. Well, you haven't seen that actually yet. You haven't seen good results from AI companies. They've been okay. They haven't been terrible, but not supporting all of this fluff and we'll call it fluff that we are seeing in the markets now because of nvidia earnings now i think the markets pretty straightforward are expecting huge things for nvidia they're expecting the the best case scenario plus some they're expecting nvidia to crush their earnings which i'm sure they will the markets are currently expecting nvidia to give you a massive guidance raise again Anything short of that, if NVIDIA does not change their full year guidance or if their guidance goes up just a little bit, kind of like what we've seen with other quote unquote AI stocks or just other stocks out there in general, they haven't really raised guidance nearly to the same degree NVIDIA did on their last earnings. Markets want to see that from NVIDIA. If we don't get that, NVIDIA probably sells off. And this time around, it's going to take everything down with it. That's my base case. That's what I expect. I expect NVIDIA is going to fall. Now, do I think the stock's going to fall 20, 30% after earnings? At least not the next day. That's that's not what I 
think if you think that's possible well you could make a lot of money on some of those downside puts i do have a small position myself if you guys want access to all of my trades in real time link down below in the description of this video that's not necessarily what i'm betting on but a five to ten percent drop in nvidia would have a detrimental effect on your big tech names your ai uh, kind of stocks which do control the broader markets and this ai kind of hopium i want to call it because you're not really seeing anything materializing from ai right now is or has affected basically everything in the markets so i think that is a problem for the broader markets next week and that could be to a benefit of amc if we do continue to see this discorrelation where AMC does well on days where the markets do poorly. The second biggest catalyst you're going to have next week is Jackson Hole Economic Symposium. That's going to be Fed Jerome Powell. Uh, last time we got this because you get these once a year. Well, last time we got this was back in August. And the markets fell 19% the following two months. It basically killed the bear market rally and sent markets to new lows. I don't think Fed Jerome Powell is going to be that hawkish. Although I think the markets are expecting really um, not too many rate hikes. The vast majority of the markets expects there to not be another rate hike. The Fed minutes just said earlier this week on Wednesday that there could be multiple rate hikes to come if things like Supercore does not continue to fall, that they have more work to do before they get to 2% inflation. That was not something the markets expected. If Fed Jerome Powell reiterates a lot of those same things, that could be a problem for our markets. And that's something to definitely keep on your radar. Again, this could be very positive for AMC. This could be very negative for the broader markets or vice versa. It's really hard to tell because I'm not a fortune teller. But one thing that I do know is NVIDIA earnings probably not going to live up to the to the hope that the markets are currently hoping for if it does if nvidia comes out and it beats on their their prior guidance and comes out and raises guidance like they did last time again well nvidia stocks going up another 20 30 percent the the day after earnings and then i would say the bottom's probably in for the markets at least in the very uh short term so these are things to keep in mind. Nonetheless, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.